forsake us. He is for us. So today, let us just you know, relish that truth as we sing these songs to, for, well, no, to praise the Lord today. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we know that you are here. And Lord, we will just give you all the glory, praise, honor, and thanksgiving because you deserve it. Oh, we worship you, God, today. And Lord, I pray that as we worship, that you would meet us, Lord. We don't, I don't know, Lord, kung ano pinagdaanan, Lord, ng bawat isa. Pero, Lord, you know, you know. So, Lord, may you minister to each and every one. Oh, may the breath of life, Lord, just be breathed on every single one of your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Your mercy endure forever. 
endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from every nation, people from every nation, nation and tongue, say, from, from generation, generation to generation, we worship you.
don't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet.
hard singing that song because there are things that you've been praying for that God has not answered yet. Oh, today, 
today, let us just surrender yung, all of these prayers to Him. Let us just surrender these things that we are waiting for answers for. And let us rest in the truth of His love that is high and wide and deep. Oh God, even when we don't see it, You are working. Oh, even when we don't feel it, You are working. God, I pray for those who may be discouraged today because they have not received a yes from you. I pray, God, that you will you will envelop them with your love, with your assurance that you are here, that you are for them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, would you have your way? Have your way, God. How beautiful this love you will lay down your crown. Surrender your throne in heaven so that I can be found. How awesome it this love that conquered the grave. Love that can move the mountains, yet knows me by name. It's a
You are a rock. You are our Jehovah Rapha. Our Lord, we thank you that you sent your son so that through his wounds we would be healed. And so, Lord, we come. We come. We ask for your special touch today. Lord, we pray for physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing.
those who are saved, I want to be part of God's life. I want to be in His family. our habits uh, classes. There's a habits one and habits four coming. So please uh, join us there, right? Amen, amen. And, and why should you give? Why should we give? You know, I, I was just listening to our songs today. And did, you, did you, I mean, weren't you moved by that song, We Were Beggars, but now we're royalties. <laughs> well, that, how can you not give? When the best thing that could ever happen to a person's life is that they would have an encounter with Christ and their lives will be forever changed. And every time we give, we're saying, we're making a declaration, I am part of what God is doing. Do not miss that. It's, it's just a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to take part in what God is doing. You know, a lot of people, they waste their lives because they never invest in the kingdom of God. They only invest in themselves. But I'm telling you, that's, that's one of the reasons the Father sent His Son to die on the cross so that He could save us from wasting our lives. He sent His Son so that you and I will be useful for Him. 
So let's exercise that. Let's give thanks to God. Let's tell God, Lord, thank you for saving me. And now I'm, I'm giving. I'm giving faithfully. I'm giving consistently. I'm giving sacrificially. And I am giving hilariously for the Lord. Amen. So let's all stand po. Let's all stand and uh, please uh, come here. Uh, there are two boxes on both sides and please drop your offerings. And if you have prayer requests, uh, please uh, write them. You, and later po, you can put them at the, at the box uh, outside. Uh, please come, give your offerings. Let's give it joyfully to the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And again, to those that are online, you can also continue to participate by giving. And again, God bless all of you as you continue to support the ministries of our church. Your gifts are important to continue to proclaim the gospel, not just in the walls, within the walls of this church, but more importantly, outside. But we do thank God for the beautiful walls of our church. Praise the Lord. Our, our church sanctuary and building keeps getting upgraded more and more and more with each passing month. So we give thanks to God uh, for that as well. Hallelujah. Woo! Tell someone near you, second half na pala ng 2024. No? July na eh. Wow. Which means, and uh, unfortunately, it's Pastor Ana who has memorized how many days there are uh, before Christmas. And I'm not. Uh, so I don't know. But uh, malapit na po ang Pasko. So we give thanks to God uh, for that. So we're doing a series on the book of Acts. If you've been doing your daily Bible readings and NCPDV po, si Pastor Danny, every morning yan, uh, yung kanyang King's Word takes us through some of those readings as well so that we not only read for ourselves, but we learn from a teacher of God's Word what each of those passages mean. No, but... Today, we will examine the third uh, part of our series on the book of Acts, the Acts 2 Church. Our main text comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. So just allow me to read the, just this one verse. No? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted. It's not something haphazard. It's not something that is an afterthought. But it was really a desire, a passionate uh, thing to do that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They were serious to learn what does God's word have to say. And to the fellowship, meaning they, they desire to be with brothers and sisters in Christ. And then today, we will look at the breaking of bread and prayer. So again, the seven characteristics that we will look at, we've been looking at and we will continue till the first week of August. Apostolic teaching, fellowship, today breaking of bread and prayer. Signs and wonders, generosity, worship, and evangelism. We will receive communion, by the way, at the end of this message. And this message is focused on the power of prayer. Now, each of us must pray. It's a spiritual discipline necessary to grow in our Christian walk and to grow closer to the Lord. We cannot become a strong believer of Jesus without personal prayer. It's very important, okay? So, on your own, in your own quiet times, in the house, in your office, you know, before when I would work, I would come very early to avoid traffic so that I will be in my office. I was working as an accountant and I'm the one who opens the office, you know. I'm earlier than the janitor. I'm earlier than the messenger. Why? Because... I want that, those quiet moments in our house uh, back in QC. There's a, already in early morning and dami ng activities. There's already a lot of noise. I could not get like a, a half hour even of quietness, you know. So what I'll do, I'll just go early to the office and that's where I spend my quiet time. And so now, of course, if you drive, you can do that as well in the car. But again, if you do your quiet time in the car while you're driving... Drive with your eyes wide open. All right? So that you will not go to heaven too early. Okay? So be, be wide awake while, you know, uh, while you're praying. So you can do it in the house, at work, in the car, wherever. But there is power in corporate prayer. When the people of God come together to pray, and we will examine seven uh, different passages in the book of Acts today to highlight seven insights on prayer, just based from the early church's experience, 
uh, in the book of Acts. So let us open with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you that you gather us every week, not just on Sundays, but those of us who will attend a Thursday night service or on Saturday night during the doctrine service online or during our life groups or habits classes. You gather us because it's very important that not only we learn to pray alone by ourselves, if we are married, we, we pray with our spouse. If we have family, we can pray together as a family. But together as a church community, we can gather to pray. And today we will examine examples of how powerful it is when people of God gather to pray. And so teach us, Lord, today to pray as the apostles asked Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So the seven passages we will look at are very long. We will not read the entire passage or else we'll be here until next week, all right? So what I'll do is I'll highlight portions of the passage and then I will show you the insight that we will gain from that. So we begin with Acts chapter 1. So let me, let me set up uh, the story. Jesus has already died, risen from the grave, appeared to the disciples, sent them out and said, go into all the world, make disciples, etc. Then he went up to heaven. So now, the early church led by the apostles are here on earth. Jesus is up there in heaven and they're still waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. But Peter and the apostles felt there's something we have to do before we even proceed to fulfill the Great Commission. And what is that? To fill in the role of one of us who left us. And that person, of course, we know as Judas. And that's why the name of Judas, and, and I, 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 I have yet to meet any family who wishes to name their newborn child Judas. Maraming pagpipilian, pero hindi napipili yung Judas. Bakit? Because God knows, ano, who does not pay. Ayun. So Judas has become synonymous with betrayal, with just a, a, an evil a character, an evil heart. So Peter assembles, there was about 120 of them. And then it says, Peter says, it's necessary to choose one from among the men who have been with us the entire time. So there's 120 of us here, men and women. So any one of you could be the replacement of Judas. But we have to ask God who among us will be that person that will be drafted to replace Judas. And so they prayed. So there were two people that they were, it, it came down to two. Parang job interview, no? It came down to two. And those two were Joseph called Barsabbas and Matthias. And so they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. We don't know. We can only see from the outside. We don't know what is in each person's heart. But show us which of these two you've chosen for the apostolic ministry that Judas has left. And then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, and Matthias was added to the eleven. So, when we get to heaven, by the grace of God, not by the works we have done, so let me emphasize that, doctrine is important. No? <laughs> there is a test at the door. Name the twelve apostles. Anyone here, you want to dare to try? Name the 12. Ang hirap, ano? Some of us, even myself, off the top of my head, I could immediately name 6, 7, 8, and then I struggle with the, the last 3 or 4, right? But here, the second test is so much easier. Name the replacement. So you only have to memorize one name. And the name is Matthias. So tell someone near you, Matthias. Right? Keep that in your head, huh? Matthias. So if that's the question when you get to heaven, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior during the water baptism last week? Do you commit to grow in discipleship? Yes, amen, yes. Name the replacement of Judas. Okay. <laughs> and if you can say, Matthias, good. Enter into the joy of the Lord. No, just kidding, just kidding. So, so Matthias was the replacement. So here's the first insight, very important. Can we read together? When the people of God pray, God gives guidance for important leadership decisions. It is tempting to base our decisions as a church or even in the corporate, to, to copy the corporate world and look as, mm, yeah, yeah, he looks like someone who should be a leader. And it's very tempting to use very humanistic 
qualifications to determine who should be the next leader. But God is very clear. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. This is the story of when David was chosen as king. When, when the dad, Jesse, paraded his sons, who will be the next king? The prophet was tempted to name the firstborn, the secondborn, etc. And then the Lord said to Samuel the prophet, Do not consider the appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord what? Looks at the heart. And throughout church history, and most recently in the last couple of decades, men of God, especially men, some women, but especially men of God, pastors, preachers, who on the outside just look the part. When you say, what does a pastor look like? What does a preacher look like? Yun. Okay? Because he looks the part, have fallen left and right. Because even though on the outward appearance they look the part, turns out their heart was not right. There were things there that only God sees and God exposes. And it's amazing, Barbara, and I have talked about this over the years, you know, Now people who are already near either retirement or near even going to the other side of eternity, you know, and God still chooses to expose them. You would think, Lord naman, you know, it's a few more years. Uh, nobody will even know what they did 10 years, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Nobody knows. Why expose them at that moment? Because for God, the integrity of His house matters. And so we go to this passage and say, Lord, please help us always choose the right leaders. Not the ones that we think will get the job done, but that God Himself says, He or she is that person that I have appointed. Amen? Amen. So second, it's in Acts chapter 2. We are familiar with this passage now. So the disciples, the 120 of them were gathered in the upper room and on the day of Pentecost, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that rested on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So here's the second insight. Let's read together. When the people of God pray, God empowers them for witness and releases His gifts for ministry. Amen. So it's amazing how sometimes again the church falls into the trap of using very secular principles to apply to ministry. Some of them do work, by the way. Allow me to emphasize that. No? So John Maxwell over the years has become known as like a leadership guru. And he takes leadership principles that are generally acceptable in the corporate world and says, these are also applicable in the church. The answer is, absolutely, yes. But also, I heard a teaching one time by someone who unfortunately also fell on the side uh, many, many years ago. His name is Bill Hybels. No? Excellent pastor and teacher. He said, most times the laws of discipleship and the laws of leadership are on the same track. But sometimes they clash. And in moments of clash, what do you do? You choose discipleship over leadership. Meaning, choose the spiritual principles of God. Right, good. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> you choose the spiritual principles of God that, has, that are listed in God's Word and not the secular principles that may be applicable there but are not applicable here. For example, I'll just give you an example. Right? Uh, when you have a heart ailment, you go to the best cardiologist in town. The best. You probably will not inquire from this doctor How's your family? How's your marriage? Are you faithful to your spouse? You probably won't ask those questions. Doc, can you fix my heart? That's the only thing you will probably inquire. And that applies to almost anything. If you're building a house, you're going to go to an engineer or an architect, the best in town that has a good reputation. You probably will not inquire about their private life, their home life, Marriage and family. Because generally, those things don't matter. But in church, they do. Amen? 
in church, they do. For ministry, it's not just the skill. It is the empowering of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts that come with it. The prophet Zechariah says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Says the Lord, hindi ito pagalingan, palakasan, but anointing ni Lord. 1 Corinthians 12 is a familiar passage. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. Different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one. Just as he determined. So, let me give you even from my, own, from my own life. John Maxwell, in one of his books, says this. If you want to know who a leader is, he said, uh, a born leader, go to the playground, observe the kids playing. Whichever of that group of 12, 10 kids playing is the one that is like commanding everyone to say, oh, today we will play this from this time to this time. You, you're in charge of that. You, you're in charge of that. From John Maxwell, from a leadership perspective, he says, that is a born leader. My friends, that's not me. When I was a a kid, if it's time to play basketball, usually the two best players gets to choose teammates. Correct? How many of you have ever played basketball like that? So you get the two best and say, oh, ikaw, akin ka, dito ka. Then yung isa, oh, ikaw, akin ka. And then, halos tapos na yung pilian, I'm still standing. <laughs> Haven't been chosen yet. And then one of them will say, kulang pa ng isa. Halika, sumali ka na. <laughs> Ako po yung last, saling pusa. Okay? So, sometimes I get to play, sometimes not. In fact, in one of the games that we played in the Liga, yung mga sa barangay, my kuya was the coach and he benched me. Kuya ko na yun, ha? Kuya ko na yon nagbench sa akin. Hindi ako pinaglaro. Sinumbong ko kaya sa tatay ko. Pinagalitan ni tatay. Ipasok mo yung anak ko sa susunod na laro. Yeah. So, the only way that I get to play is my tatay intervened and said to the coach who is my kuya, make sure your younger brother gets to play. And he did. Like one minute left when there was 20 points difference and there, it doesn't matter anyway who plays, talo na lahat eh. So, sige lang, mag-play ka na. So, I did not display any kind of leadership ability or skill as a child except that God called me. And the only way I can stand here before you, my friends, because I've also never been a teacher of any kind growing up. I've never been in any kind of setting where I was the one, the, the, parang the expert who is pray, giving information out. I've never been that. In class, pag may been a class elections, or yung uh, school elections, di ba? Yung president, vice president. Never got to any of those positions. One time, PRO. To this day, I have no idea what it was supposed to be about. <laughs> ano ba yung PRO na yan? What's the job description of a PRO? I don't know. But Albert, you're the PRO. Okay, so I'm that, you know. But when God places His hand on you and anoints you with the Spirit, you can do things you've never done before. You can do things you've never learned before because the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And, and, and I, I want to boast about my wife, Barbara. We celebrated 31 years. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God has given her so much grace and patience to stand by me 31 years, you know. Praise the Lord. But she's an excellent worship leader. We don't, we, you, know, you, don't, you don't get to experience that yet here because sabi niya, retired na ako dyan, han. Ikaw, ikaw yata yung hindi nag-retire. Ako yung nag-retire, sabi niya. And she's passed that on. She's trained others, you know. Her, her dad, by the way, uh, she was in Hong Kong, uh, in their church in Hong Kong. And her dad was a professional musician. Uh, composed music and arranged and played for the likes of Anthony Castello, Lea Navarro, Basil Valdez, all the big names in the 1970s and 1980s in the music industry. Her dad has arranged music for and played for. So her st- his standard is like, you know, if you're going to be in the music, you have to be like this. Okay? She does not even reach the standard of her dad. But when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on her, the people of God get to worship. That's what I mean. 
it is not just a skill. Skill can be learned. We can learn skills. But the anointing of God falls directly from heaven. Amen? But your heart has to be right. If your heart's not right, the anointing might, ay, mm, mm, lumipat. <laughs> Biglang lumiko because your heart uh, is not right. So, Acts chapter 4. So, Peter and John are jailed in prison. And what does the church do? They gather to pray. Say, Lord, consider their threats. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and to perform signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. And then after they prayed, this is what it says, the place was shaken and they were filled with the Spirit and they went out and spoke the word of God boldly. Wow. How many of you, if you'll be honest, you're embarrassed sometimes? To share the gospel. I mean, patutuhanan lang, di ba? Kakaya, ano? Parang, mm, jahe, you know? Na- nakatakot. Have you ever shared the gospel and was rejected outright? Nakakaisang sentence ka palang, uh, you know, I'm not interested. Not interested. Okay? Pa- don't even, pa- sh- sh- you know, tama na, wag na. No, I'm not interested. So I've, I've received that, those kinds of rejections. At other times, they allow you to actually say things and near the end, eh, so parang minsan sabi ko, what's better, to be rejected on the first sentence or to spend 30 minutes talking and then to be rejected here? Okay? Sometimes you wonder, no? sana doon pa lang sa umpisa, hindi na naubos yung oras ko sa'yo. Hindi ka naman pala tatanggap sa Lord. Di ba? So parang ganun. And so many times, parang iba na lang, Lord. How many of you have ever prayed that kind of prayer? Lord, iba na lang. Use someone else. I have prayed that, I tell you, so many times. Lord, someone else. And then it comes back to me, Pastor, ikaw talaga eh. Sabi ng Lord eh. Talaga? Sigurado kang si Lord ang nagsabi sa'yo. Kasi parang ayoko eh. You know? And yet, when you step out in faith and the Spirit of God gives you the boldness, you're able to say things that you did not even conceive in your mind what to say. So, Jesus says so in Matthew chapter 10. He says, don't worry about what to say or to, how to say it. And because at that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And so here's insight number three. I think I forgot that slide. When the people of God pray, God gives them boldness to proclaim the good news. So the next time you're feeling parang hesitant, timid, etc., but you sense in your heart God is telling you to talk to that person. And that person may not necessarily be a long way off. It could just be, as Bill Hybels also has a book, just across the room. The person that God may need, want you to talk to is your relative, your office mate, your classmate, your neighbor. It's just a few steps away. You know, many times, and Lord, I'm willing to go to Timbuktu. Are you willing to cross the street? Sometimes must ready pa tayo to go far, far away, but across the street. But God will give you that kind of boldness. Amen? Then Acts chapter 6. So, the first argument as far as we know in the early church was over food. Pinag-awayan nila food. Pinag-awayan nila who gets to be the first in line in the buffet. Who gets to eat first? Okay. So, so a, a group of people saying, this is not right, you know. Once the food is laid out, our group uh, doesn't have any more because that group always gets to be first to get to eat. And so the disciples were trying to calm everybody's nerves down. And then the Apostle Peter said, it's not right that we are neglecting the ministry of the Word so that we can fix this kind of problem. Let's find people that can manage this problem for us. And they prayed. And they chose seven who were filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. And we turned over to them this responsibility. And then the apostles focused on the ministry of the Word and of prayer. Here's the fourth insight. When the people of God pray, God gives them wisdom to choose key leaders for administrative work. Administrative work is very important. Yes, leading worship, important. Tech, important. You know, everything else, uh, teaching habits class or leading a life group. But many churches that I have uh, interacted with over the years, 
they have the excellent worship team, tech, everything is excellent. But a lousy office. Lousy behind the scenes. And so what happens? They get into financial troubles. They get into legal troubles. They get into all kinds of troubles. Not because the worship team does not know how to lead worship. Not because the discipleship teachers does not know how to, lead, how to teach the Word of God. But because those behind the scenes don't have the gift that God has for such a requirement. 1 Corinthians 12.28 the gift of administration. In the Greek is kubernesis, from where we get the English word to govern or government. It's a gift from God. I want to honor and thank God for our board of trustees. Palapakan nyo naman sila. They're behind the scenes. You don't know them, many of you. You know, sino ba yun? You, know, you don't see their work, but the excellence of their work is felt by the things that you see. So, what you see on the outside is like this physical body. But there's internal organs here that if the internal organs don't work properly, what's going to happen? You're going to have major, major problems. So even though ang pogi-pogi mo ang ganda-ganda mo on the outside, your liver, your kidney, your pancreas, nobody can see it. It's all inside. That's what administration is all about. If they do it well, you don't see it, but you feel it. And thank God here in beginning church we do that. Amen? Thank you for our board, finance, building, everything else that happens, personal and all of that. Alright, next, Acts chapter 10. Let me give you a background again. So Peter is on top of his house. Uh, Chilaks-chilaks lang siya. Uh, Nagsesiesta doon. And then all of a sudden, God shows him a vision of unclean animals. As a Jew, there's certain things that you're not supposed to eat. And then the voice said, eat. And said, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean in my life. And God says, do not call anything unclean uh, that I have already made clean. And it turns out it's just a metaphor for something that God was about to do. He was about to send Peter to the house of Cornelius, a Roman official, and Jews are not supposed to enter the house of a Gentile. I'm not going to do that. But thanks be to God, Peter earlier already said, we would rather obey God than man. So when God says, go, he went. And when he began to speak, the Spirit of God fell down on everyone there. They get saved, they get speak in tongues and all of that, which brings us to the fifth insight. When the people of God pray, what does it do? God breaks down the walls of division to unify His people for His divine purpose. We all come here from different backgrounds, different ethnicities and all of that, like I mentioned last week. If we focus on what is different between us, we're not going to get anything done. Kami mga Ilocano dito. Kami mga Bicolano doon. Kami mga Bisaya doon. Kami mga, you know, and then the Filipinos here, the Africans there, the Indians there. So what are we going to do? We're not going to work together? No. The idea is that there is, our commonality is not our ethnicity, it's our faith in Jesus Christ. It should overcome anything that supposedly divides us. In fact, one of the saddest things, and this is confirmed in, in our different travels, no? um, that Filipinos bring their division wherever they go. <laughs> so that there in, in even one locality, for example, in LA or in San Francisco, in one locality, there is, for example, a Korean association, there is a Chinese association, there's an Indian association, and there are 20 Filipino associations. Because dito kami, diyan kayo. Because we're from the north, we're from the south. Filipinos bring our division everywhere we go. But uh, the others, they seem to like, yeah, it's okay, we may come from different parts of our country, but we're in another country now, we better be together or else we're not going to make it. So, God has shown the church the value of unity. One of my co-pastors in the past had this beautiful slogan. He said, there are more things, we have more things in common that unite us than things that are different that divide us. So if you think about it and pray about it, you will find more things in common that unite us than things that are different 
that will divide us. Unfortunately, we focus on the things that divide us. So that I don't agree with you on that. Don't ka dito ako. I don't agree. Don't ka dito ako. And Jesus prayed the one thing that the high priestly prayer in John 17. What did he pray about? That they may be one. That the church may be united. Amen. So let's continue. Um, in Acts, sorry, where am I now? Oh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. I, I missed this. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. When you examine church history, churches have divided on almost the most ridiculous and silly things. Yes, some of it was on very serious stuff, but a lot of it was not. I pray to the Lord that here in Beginnings Church that we can overcome whatever those differences might be, and we will say, but Jesus is Lord here. And the Holy Spirit is at work here. And we have one Father here. And we're brothers and sisters in Christ here. I don't agree with you on that, but I love you anyway. Amen? So can we just tell someone near you, say, I love you, bro. I love you, sis. I love you in the love of the Lord. You know? And then, uh, dugtungan mo na lang ng, uh, but wag ka namang pasaway palagi. But I love you. Okay. But wag ka namang pasaway. Okay, so, no. Acts chapter 12. Peter uh, and, and John were in prison and the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And the night before uh, Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains and there were guards at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and he said, get up. Op he, he opened the gates and Peter escaped from death at that moment. In insight number six is this. Can we read together? When the people of God pray, God performs signs and wonders to protect His chosen servants from harm. Wow. You know, um, one, one family that has been regularly coming uh, to our church and said, Pastor, this is our church uh, for, you know, see, Pastor Danny Bayasen is the director of Asia Center for Missions. Um, he was my student in one of my classes in ASCM. And then he said, Pastor, attend mo na kami ng church niyo. And, and, you know, and then his family loved it here. Praise the Lord. So they're here. They served as missionaries in Burkina Faso in Africa for almost 20 years. One of the most dangerous places. Not, not the entire continent of Africa is dangerous. There's plenty that are peaceful. But that particular one was not. Especially when they went there. You know? But out of obedience to God, they went. And they have testimonies of how God protected them from harm in many different occasions that could have ended their life back then. So, when the Lord called them back here, so now they are director of Asia Center for Missions. Last Sunday, they were here and they asked us to pray for them because for the first time after almost 10 or 15 years or something, they're going back. Not to Burkina Faso, but to Sudan. Sabi ko, talaga lang ah. <laughs> Marami pagpipilian. <laughs> so from a dangerous part of Africa that you already left, to another dangerous part of Africa. There's many others to choose from. Eh, Pastor, dun yung kailangan eh. When you exercise faith in God to keep you safe, when you respond to God's call, He will keep you safe. Amen? There are missionaries all over the world and we have to pray for them because for many of us, the worst persecution we ever got was you got rejected, you got laughed at, you were mocked. That's it. Na persecute ako. Tapos meron pa nga noon before. Pastor, pinipersecute ako sa office. Bakit naman? Kasi umalis ako nung maaga tapos nagbabible study ako. Pinipersecute ako. Sabi ko, hindi ka pinipersecute. <laughs> Dapat lang na <laughs> mapagalitan ka. Okay, so hindi persecution yun. Okay. So sometimes we think, you know, it's not, you know, but there are people of God, servants of God in places that is very dangerous. And we have to pray that God keeps them safe from harm. Uh, Acts chapter 13 is going to be our last text that we will examine. So in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. And while they were worshiping, while they were praying, the Holy Spirit spoke, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them. So they prayed, they fasted, they laid hands on them, and then they sent them off. And here's the last. Can we pray? We read together? When the people of God pray, God sets apart certain individuals 
and calls them for an important mission. Your pastors are praying that from among us here, God will call men and women and to say, you're going there, you're going here. Lord, iba na lang, iba na lang. No, no, no. Your response should be like the prophet Isaiah. Here I am, Lord, send me. And he does not say where. Anywhere. Should be, no? Lord, send me to a five-star hotel. A business class flight. You know, where there is filet mignon every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And God said, hmm, never mind. <laughs> okay. So, but if you're willing to say, Lord, send me wherever the need is there. And even if personally, I don't want to go there. If you say, I'm supposed to go there. <sighs> Sige, Lord, send me. Now, for some of us, it will be really far away. To, to China, to Indonesia, to Ukraine, etc. To India, wherever. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's across the street. Sometimes it's in your office to talk to someone. It's in the school. Or sometimes it's to talk to someone that really honestly inside of you, I don't want to talk to them, Lord. They don't deserve the gospel. Wow. May ganun pa, no? Ako. And, 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 and Barbara and I coming here, we're, we're laughing because last week I mentioned something and I commented, walang nag-amen. When I said, you know, something like this, God loves politicians. At walang nag-amen. And then I said, ang hirap kasing sabihin, ano? To be honest, when you see what's happening, it's difficult to say, but God loves them. But He does. I did not say that they're saved. I did not say that they're good people. But I simply said that the God who loves you and me loves them as well. And wishes for them to hear the good news, to repent and have the opportunity to respond in faith. So many years ago, God gave Barbara and I that opportunity and my initial response was, Lord, send someone else. And when the relative said to me, but pastor, ikaw talaga yung nilalagay na pangalan ni Lord sa akin. Sabi ko, sigurado ka bang si Lord yun? <laughs> because in my heart, I don't want to go. Because my heart was in revolution, in anger and not being upset about all the stories I was hearing. But then I said, okay Lord, I'm going to pray about this and then if you really give me a word, and the word was from Cornelius, do not call anything unclean that I've already declared clean. It's not your job to choose who to talk to. Your job is to go where I tell you to go. To obey when I say speak, you speak. What do I'm going to speak? I'll give you what to speak. Okay, Lord. <laughs> you know? And so I went. And ended as I go, okay, Lord, I'll do this once, and then that's it. No more. One time long. One time big time. So I did. And then I went home. Okay, Lord. Okay na ako. Thank you, Lord. I did my part. I testified. I shared the gospel. I, I, I gave it to, to this person, this politician, and his family. Very good. End of story. And then the Lord says, not yet. You will keep going back to their family. <sighs> All the way to the detention center. And so I would be there in Krame, speaking to a very powerful politician. That was the thing. And the second time I went there, there were two of them there. Sabi ko talaga naman, Lord, ah, hindi ka pa makontento sa isa. Dalawa pa ang kakausapin ko dito. But the, I had a job. My job is not to deny the other person the gospel because of my personal feelings. My job is to give the gospel to anyone who is willing to hear it. The response is up to them. Amen. We do not control how people respond. But our job is to tell. So the next person, the Holy Spirit, urges you to talk to your boss whom you absolutely hate. Inside of you, hmm, you know, Lord, talk to him. Iba na lang, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord, I'll talk. Talk to your neighbor who, hmm, Lord, sana umalis na lang sila. Let them transfer to another community. You know, somewhere all the way to an island somewhere out there. But they don't move. Instead, God tells you, talk to them. You move out of your comfort zone and talk. What do you do? But when you pray, God's Spirit will show you 
who and how and even the when and the where because God's desire is for people to hear the good news. Again, that, that was the word, the rebuke that I got from the Lord is that I'm not asking for your opinion. I'm asking for your obedience. God doesn't care about our opinions about this and that. If He tells us to go, we go. Amen? If He tells us to talk, we talk. And then we leave the results to Him. Amen? So tell to the person near you, Sangka inuudyok ni Lord? <laughs> Where is the Holy Spirit parang nudging you to go? And if He does, remember, respond. So we thank God for our missionaries in the different parts of the world. So here again as a review, can we read together? When the people of God pray, God gives guidance for important leadership decisions. When the people of God pray, God empowers them for witness and releases His gifts for ministry. When the people of God pray, God gives them boldness to proclaim the good news. When the people of God pray, God gives them wisdom to choose key leaders for administrative work. When the people of God pray, God breaks down the walls of division to unify His people for His divine purpose. When the people of God pray, God performs signs and wonders to protect His chosen servants from harm. And finally, when the people of God pray, God sets apart certain individuals and calls them for an important mission. Hallelujah. Worship team, come. One quote, and can we stand, all of us? And we will be spending time in prayer right now, and then we will have communion afterwards. This quote, you can do more than pray after you've prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. Oh, I love that. You can do more than pray after you prayed, and you should. Yes, you prayed about it, but you have to do it. You have to go, you have to obey. But you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. So today, before we have communion, I'd like us to have prayer groups, whoever is closest to you. There are three items that I want us to pray for right now. Pray for our church, no? that God will continue to unify us in our heart and mind and purpose. That He will not allow any seed of divisions to come upon us, to divide us. You know. Second, pray for pastors and missionaries. You don't have to name all of them. If you can remember some of the names of your pastors and missionaries, wonderful. But just pray that they will remain steadfast in their calling because pastors and missionaries come under attacks, come under temptations, come under trials. Please pray. And then last, pray that the Lord of the harvest, that is God our Father, will send forth more workers into the harvest field because the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So go ahead. Whoever is closest to you, four or five people, just join hands and pray and use uh, that as a guide. We will keep that slide up even while our worship team is just singing quietly. But just pray for these things. Amen. So go ahead. Don't be embarrassed. Maybe one or two in the group can be the ones to lead the prayers. Thank you, Jesus. We can sing quietly.
You can continue to pray, but our worship team will now lead us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, sing it. This You can go ahead and show the lyrics. Go ahead and uh, get your communion elements right now. So the early church, they broke bread, you know. It signifies, it's one of the significant uh, metaphors used for communion. The Greek word is Eucharistia, where we get the English translation Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. It is derived from the Last Supper when Jesus gave thanks to the Father as He lifted the bread and the cup signifying the body and the blood of the new covenant that he was about to establish. This new covenant in Christ is no longer based on a physical exodus from physical slavery in Egypt, but a spiritual exodus from sin. It was no longer entry into a physical promised land of Canaan, but a spiritual promised land, the kingdom of God. It was no longer based on the blood of a lamb, but on the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And so just hold on to the communion elements right now. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, He took bread, He broke it, He gave thanks, and He said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now eat the bread. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you for your broken body on the cross. It was a perfect body because it was a sinless body. You're not supposed to die for our sins because we were the ones who sinned. We're supposed to die for our own sins. But then what would that do? We cannot save ourselves and we cannot save each other. God sent His Son to be our Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so thank you that on your wounded body on the cross, you carried every sin of every human from the first humans all the way to the very last humans that will be born. Every sin that we ever committed, every act of disobedience, every act of lust, every act of theft, every act of murder, not just the actual, but in our minds when we hate someone else enough to wish them harm. Lord, for those things, forgive us. For envy, for greed, for malice, forgive us. All the different things that we have done, Lord God, that were displeasing in your eyes, all of it was placed on your Son, Jesus Christ. He paid the debt we, we, He did not owe. We owed the debt we could never ever pay. And so thank you, Lord Jesus. After supper, Jesus took a cup. Once again, He gave thanks to the Father and gave to His disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in My blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of Me. Let us now drink from the cup. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank You for the new covenant in Your blood. 
It is the blood of the perfect Lamb of God. Without blemish, without defect. Lord Jesus, you obeyed the Father 100% from the time you were conceived all the time to your death and to your resurrection. Lord, we want to be like you. And so, Holy Spirit, would you continually form the identity of Jesus in us, the character of Jesus in us, so that our words, our thoughts, our actions, our motives are always a reflection of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the times when we do fall down and fall short, once again, Lord, forgive us and cleanse us and allow us to start all over. And Lord, as a church community, thank you for Beginnings Church. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Dennis Hepner and Sister Dini who started this community 27-something years ago. Lord God, all those who were part of it in the initial stages, including Pastor Danny Villar that is here and his family, and all the pastors that over the years, Lord God, that you used mightily. Missionaries, life group leaders, habits teachers, worship teams. Lord, so many different workers have gone through these 27 plus years of Beginnings Church. We thank you for each and every one of them. For our board of trustees, we thank you for each and every one of them. And Lord God, we are, part, we are but a small part of a larger community that is the body of Christ. Found all throughout our nation under different names, different denominations. They have different styles of worship. They gather in different locations. But we serve one God. We believe in one Savior and one Lord. There is one Holy Spirit at work in us. There is one Bible, the Word of God that we proclaim. There is one Gospel that saves. And there is truly, Lord, only one body of Christ. We are different parts, but there is one body. And so God, we honor that body and we pray the grace of God on all the different churches, even here in Makati. There's many others here. We speak your blessing on them, all of their pastors and leaders. We thank you, O God, for all the different missionaries, foreign missionaries that have come to our land to plant the seeds of the gospel and the Filipino missionaries that have gone all across the world to proclaim the gospel. And here in our church community, even though we are small, we are at microcosm of what we're supposed to be from every tribe, every language, every tongue, every nation. We thank you for our Indian brethren that are here, our African brethren that are here, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, all kinds, American, all kinds of different ethnicities worshiping our one God and Father Jesus and our Lord Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and praise always. In Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. Have a great day. Next week, Pastor Anna will be the one preaching signs and wonders. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.